you know, I just say I'm an artist and mostly I, I would say I carve wood, mostly objects, and there's a sense of humor to everything I do. Folk art inspired. I like a lot of naive uh, artists and uh, self-taught artists. You know, there's people sometimes just ask out of politeness. You know, they don't really want to hear you talk for, you know, an hour about what you do. Um, and then so I just judge it on like how interested they actually are. You know, do they want to hear the I love me story or not, you know? Then I'd just say, I mostly carve wood, and then they'll say, oh, do you ever, do you ever carve scrimshaw? No, I don't do scrimshaw. I always liked it, you know, even when I was a kid, I made stuff out of wood, you know. I'd make swords, you know, so my brothers and I could have sword fights. I made some guitars that didn't play, they were just like fake rock guitars, so we could like air guitar in our, in our bedroom, you know. So I just made stuff like that, you know, uh, and it was always fun. And, 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 and with wood, there's a lot of wood just laying around. You know, I, I do buy some stuff from the um, lumber yard. It depends on what the project is. But a lot, a lot of my carvings and stuff are just from like, somebody has a tree in the backyard that's dead and I'll go and cut it down and cut it up. I was doing a lot of work based on the narco traficantes and uh, like Chapo Guzman and like what kind of furniture, or what would the interior of your house look like? So I was like, I bet if you were like a big drug lord, you would have a cocktail bar that looked like a gold pistol. So that's where the original inspiration came from for this piece. And normally we have all kinds of um, gold uh, barware that I put in it, but I just sold this. This is going away, which is both a great thing and a sad thing. It's like sending your kids off to college. You know they have to go, but you kind of miss them when they're gone. I, you know, I went to school, college, and I thought I would be a painter, you know? That was like, I'm gonna be a de Kooning, you know? I had my BFA in painting and drawing. But that, towards the end of my, um, my college career, I started doing these kind of Frank Stella-ish sculpture pieces. So they were like cut out pieces of wood and brightly painted. It was kind of Kenny Scharf and, and Frank Stella. I had a show in Dallas and right after I got out of school and, and there's a, a friend that really liked my work that bought a lot of my early paintings. And she was like, can you make furniture? And I was like, of course I can make furniture. She had this big game room that they wanted all this crazy furniture made for. And then I went home and I was like, I have no idea how to make furniture. But I just started, you know, cutting out plywood shapes and screwing it together and making chairs and tables. Just fake it till you make it, right? I mean, you know, I had to. I was like, I was broke, you know? So here's my shop. There's the other pistol that I was just talking about. This one took me seven months. It's nine and a half feet long. It's, I think, almost four feet tall. You know, it's like the same thing as uh, like the narco theme. It's plato plomo means silver or lead. And in the drug lord jargon, it means you take the bribe, you take the money, or we kill you. So either way, you're completely compromised. So this spins, and you keep your tequila in here. So I guess you could put six different kinds of tequila in there and then it'd just be like, uh, instead of Russian roulette, it'd be Mexican roulette. Uh, and then this flips open. And that's some of the, like, the gold barware that I have. There's a lot of old Western pistols that have a real ornate designs like this. And then that, but, um, the Narcos actually really decorate all their um, weapons with like very diamonds and they ice them out and stuff. So I was looking at a lot of those pistols too. And then this is um, kind of how I built it. I, I mean, you can see the, um, the splines and the, uh, how I got it 
got the barrel round and everything, and then I just I carved it after it was made. It's fake. It's not a real one, otherwise I would have really smoked it. I don't really draw it all out. You know, I don't have a sheet of paper where I have all the proportions drawn. I just get like um, sheets of MDF, which is like a quarter inch, and I'll draw it out to scale. And then like the drawings, I, uh, once it's built, then I just start drawing the, drawing the designs on it. I don't have it all pre-planned or anything. I just kind of I wing it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this piece I did for a show, a uh, museum show, is called uh, El Otro Lado, which is the other side. So I had this idea of like, once you cross over into the, uh, into the, like the mafia or the drug trade, you'll never come back. And it was really going to be, it was, the skull was really only going to be about this big. But I had the projector backed up too far, so the, it was a lot bigger. And so when I started building it, I was like, this thing is twice as big as I thought it was going to be. Um, but now, like, um, yeah, now I want to do some other things with it. It's, uh, it's been a few years, but I, I want to I upholster the inside where you can sit inside of it. Hang out in your headspace. This is the shop. I just had, got a new roof last summer. And, you know, like, um, like I just have, I can't throw wood out very easily. So, you know, even small pieces, you're like, oh, I can do a knife handle out of this. You know, everything's about to be firewood, and then I'm like, uh, it's literally going in the fire, and I'm like, no, I can make something out of it. Yeah, there's some cakes down at the store. I, I haven't made any cherry pies in a long time. Um, have you seen the Prada bags that I've been making? Well, when I was cutting the beam up, the, there's a little wedges that were coming off as the drops. Then they're just sitting around and I'm like, oh, I'll just make cake out of them. Because, you know, you got to make something on it. Otherwise, it just ends up in the fire. Uh, pizza, please. I'd like a large pepperoni. I was had a show coming up. I was kind of done with the narco shows. I had a number of shows on that theme. And I just wanted to do like small town, you know, like Marfa. I was going to do a lot of icons around Marfa and Dairy Queen's one of them. I had an old cedar post that I started to cut up and then I was like, I can make something out of this. So I started making dip cones out of it. And those kind of just were real popular. And then all the other Dairy Queen stuff. And then it was going to be like, only that was only going to be a part of the show, and it kind of ended up being almost all Dairy Queen stuff. Like this is one of my hamburger paintings. It's a hunger buster, which I always liked. You know, and when I was a kid, we lived in Clifton, Texas, and the only restaurant in town, I think, was uh, the Dairy Queen. And like, and we were little league baseball, and like, if we won, you know, we'd go and get a banana split, you know, and uh, and then like the team you played would come in. And, and you know, and you're like, okay, winners get Dairy Queen, and then so I guess so do the, so do the losers. This is like a little portrait of the Marfa Dairy Queen. It's got the train going in the back and stuff. I call this a painting, but it oh, it's still a painting, but I just do it in, in relief. The Join Us for Lent was really on the the marquee of the Dairy Queen. There's a buzzard. There's a Jackrabbit. You know, there's the I Square Judd. That's an actual bumper sticker that is around town. Are the people in the car, are those actual people you know? Um, they're, you know, they're always kind of based, like when you, if you were to write a novel, you put several people together. So yeah, they're kind of people that I, I just kind of put together. They're not really an actual portrait of somebody. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Yeah, that's an airplane window. I was flew to Thailand once, and I was looking out the window. We, we were flying over the ocean, and it was um, a big, beautiful full moon, and these clouds, and then the ocean. And this is the shade, you know, like you can like. Whoosh. That's so that's that half that half shade that you can pull down. And then it kind of got scratched in storage, and I was crying about it. And then my friend was like, "Have you been on a plane lately? Everything just worn out. Have you been on American Airlines?" Like. 
the, the things are about to fall on your lap and stuff, so I'm not so worried about it. Well, that's a big mesquite tree that I had milled, but this is where I, I do a lot of work out here. And, uh, and then, like I was telling you, all my scraps, it's real hard for me to like throw any wood away. This is a whole bunch of, these are gonna be pills. Like these are all just scraps, but I turn them into like wooden spoons. Like this one has a natural bark still, or the natural wood texture on it still. And then th these are in pecan, this is an Osage. This is an oak, a post oak. Um, these are mesquite, but just various little spoons. But they're all just pieces of, like just small pieces of, from other projects. And then I think, why am I doing wooden spoons? I should be doing, you know, like the Sistine Chapel scene. I should be working on something more serious. But I can't help myself. You know, we were just throwing names around, you know, spitballing, coming up with ideas. And, and then I kind of said, we should just name it wrong because if you come in and you don't like the artwork or what we're doing, then you're in the wrong space. And then instead of the, a gallery, we decided to call it a store because I was just being flippant and saying like, people buy things at stores. They go to galleries to look, you know, they buy things from stores. So that was just like, so we were like the wrong store. We can do just about anything you want. You know, we don't have to censor ourselves or it just falls under the umbrella of wrong. Uh, at the time I had a lot of like, oh, I was doing a lot of the narco stuff and drug money and I had some cocaine sculptures and weed sculptures and so it was just easy to have it under the moniker of wrong. And most of our friends are slightly wrong, you know, they're, just little, they're all a little bit off, so myself included, you know. I had a show where I did, uh, I did four of them and I sold them, but this is one that we kept. The other ones were mirrored inside and everything. So it's just like a bar. It has, has drawers and stuff. But I'm, I love how a lot of the pieces are functional, you know? Well, it's like a big sculpture, and if it's not functional, then it's just gonna like take up space. Yeah. <laughs> it might as well have some kind of use. And it was probably like a hedge in my bets. You know, that's why <laughs> everything always had function. Like, well, and if, uh, you might as well keep it, you know. That's from like the late 90s. I was living in Oak Cliff and there's a lot of like um, car shops, you know, automotive shops around. And that's kind of like one that was in the neighborhood. I was working on it and I was out in the parking lot and, and this actual dipstick was out in the parking lot. So I put a real dipstick in it. I'll let you know when I figure it out. I don't think you only figure it out right when you die. And then you're like, either you know whether it was worth it or not. But I guess my philosophy is always relax, less stress, happy, you know, get, get everything in, you know, everything like good, you know. Something I tell myself whenever I get stressed is like one life at a time, one life at a time. You know, because you could like, you start thinking, oh, I should have moved to New York, or oh, I could have done this, or oh, we should have invested in that building, or you know, there's a lot of things that start making you think like, second guess what you're doing. And so I always just tell myself, one life at a time, please, one life at a time. People actually drink sodas this big. I don't know how they do it. <laughs>